Good afternoon on what is a surprisingly mild, uh, bright, but occasionally blustery day. It is Wednesday the 29th of December. I'm back in the Reed Nook with a cat who is not ours on my lap. A nice hot cup of tea. And of course, um, a big stack of boxes which I'm attempting to uh, dig into and unbox as best I can. And the next thing I am going to get, uh, go into is this. Now I've already been into, the, into this, so what I've pulled out uh, so far um, is a copy of Reichstar, which I did not expect to see. So thank you very much, Scott, again. Um, but uh, next in here, I'll pull this out, is, uh, well, it's definitely for me. I can tell it's definitely for me. Um, so if I... Um, This that we've got here. Uh, uh, well, it's definitely come from Swordfish, um, Swordfish Island, which is um, basically so look, um, from the base. Basically, the people do Swordfish Islands. So <laughs> open it up, and inside I have. Um, ooh, oh, okay. Uh, well, um, well, what I've got in here, um, is this, uh, which is Beyond the Borderlands, issue two, by from Gnarled Monster. Uh, Gnarled Monster you will find on, um, uh, on Twitter, uh, he's an artist, and what he's been doing, he's been doing, creating, essentially, a reinterpretation of B2, Keep on the Borderlands, um, which um, basically uh, which is the classic Dungeons and Dragons basic Dungeons and Dragons scenario which appeared um, in the basic the basic Dungeons and Dragons box set for many years sold supposedly like a you know um, thousands and thousands of copies and it's the most commonly played scenario um, for Dungeons and Dragons um, and it's still a great scenario in its kind of setup, its classic setup, um, you have the Caves of Chaos, a border fort, you go out and explore and you discover the Caves of Chaos and you go in and you strike again and again. And we've been playing this uh, using old school essentials and really enjoying ourselves, sort of like having a nostalgia uh, fest. Um, now I've already looked at this and reviewed it. Also, I said, I've already looked at the first issue, done an unboxing of it and also done uh, a review of it. Uh, as part of my ongoing uh, support for B2 Keep on the Borderlands because it's a scenario that people keep coming back to again and again. Um, so open up. Um, so um, we have um, a tutorial and a guide to quick fast travel before we get into it. We'll pull this out. We've got another set of stickers there. See, you've definitely got the owl bear there, and various creatures like the um, essentially player characters. I would suggest um, goblins and hobgoblins and kobolds and the like. Um, we've not encountered the owl bear. We have encountered the ogre. I possibly. Oh, that's going to be the minotaur up there. Oh yeah, there's the minotaur. I would suggest. And we encountered the ogre, and we managed to kill the ogre despite being only first level by casting light in its eyes and getting lucky with our dice rolls. So it can work, we were lucky. So also what we've got here um, is, um, is a map uh, which shows the locations in the uh, bloody ravine. So, um, uh, nice little decent maps. All uh, I've done a sort of like an isometric uh, three-dimensional view, which adds uh, a bit of a bit of depth to them. Um, and then we get into uh, the particular location. So we have the uh, bloody ravine. Um, so as you can see, this is all done on one hex. Now, what's interesting here is it's essentially it's page up um, to the various locations. Um, oh, let, 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 let have a look at that in a moment. So we have, you know, the Albert Den, the Goblin Caves, Cobalt Lair, 
and it's done a lot like essentially uh, going up um, step by step, difficulty by difficulty to the top. Um, whereas, if you remember your B2 kick on the Borderlands, and I do because I've talked about it quite a lot, or I've written about it quite a lot over the course of um, the last um, sort of like, well, basically, not basically last year, I believe, because I did essentially. I started off with B2 Keep on the Borderlands and B1 in Search of the Unknown, and then I went forward reviewing every single iteration that I could find, um, right up to the point where uh, I reviewed um, basically uh, Original Adventures of Reincarnated, which is the line from Goodman Games, and they take old school, I say basically, I say old school, original, uh, the original sort of like Dungeons and Dragons adventures like B. But, uh, B1 in Search of the Unknown and B2 Keep on the Borderlands and then X2, X1, uh, The Isle of Dread and uh, basically represent them and re-examine them 40 years on and, and, and then do, uh, uh, as well as uh, basically reprinting versions of them, doing them as 5th edition. Okay, so that was the last, that wasn't the last thing I did for this, this line of reviews, but it was essentially the high point and I made that my 999th review. Um, but anyway, when, what, what the thing is, when you review, when you look at the B2 Keep on the Borderlands, what you remember essentially is you're coming in from the eastern end of um, the, the, the ravine for the Caves of Chaos and going that way. Um, and essentially, the, what um, the author has done here, he's turned it 90 degrees. And that's fine. And what really what he's done there, I think, is interesting, is that he's made it um, as if you are working your way up in difficulty level. He's made that more explicit through the map. And then we have the individual layers. And again, these are re recreation, recreations of the original kind of layers, uh, re uh, but reimagined um, with the connections and so on. Um, but, uh, so let's keep going through. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah, we've got the Goblin Caves, because um, essentially so far we have gone through uh, the Goblin Caves and we've worked our way through, all the way through uh, the Hobgoblin Caves and we've done the Ogre Cave as well. So we've worked, we've we'll done most of the caves on the southern side uh, and these look very familiar. Um, then you need to sort of like mentally sort of adjust yourself to think, okay, because these are, um, to how they work, because essentially they're far more compact than they were in... Um, uh, the case of the case of chaos. Uh, then we've got the um, uh, null chambers. And what this, the, you know, um, and then we've got the chaos, the um, chaos temple itself. And you can almost imagine sort of like sitting down and starting to play, but not as a traditional role playing game, but almost like you are um, playing Link. Um, you know, in you know, basically the version of Zelda series. Um, you know, with your little joy pads and just like going around hitting things with swords and throwing your little boomerang or firing your arrows and so on. It's done in that kind of style, and that's kind of cute. I really like it. Um, and then we have um, well, it looks like Elven Catacombs. That's a new addition. Um, So this is actually, actually the second part of the trilogy, uh, and then we go through, we have all of the stats, so individually illustrated, very stripped down. So what that means is really you could take these three parts of the uh, Beyond the Borderlands, take those, run that with the retro clone of your choice. Um, so that might be old school essentials, uh, you know, or it could be Labyrinth Lord or Swords and Wizardry, or even something like Heartseeker. Or, or the, the black hat, very simple script down um, in its presentation. Um, so all of the monsters are there, um, done in a very cute style, which I really kind of like because it is feels very, uh, very much like a, um, a SNES game. Um, and um, at the very end, you have a um, number of player characters and NPCs, which the uh, GM could use to bring those into uh, in, into her game and lastly what we've got here is um essentially I mean, basically a set of dungeon raiders all ready to play 
Um, so basically extra notes with things like character creation, um, location and affiliations, um, play monsters as NPCs, how to play. So it, you know, that this <coughs> this is almost um, you know here are the rules to play in this. So yeah, quite impressed by that. Nice little package. Really like the first one. Looking forward to, to, to looking at this one in depth. Um, which will be the next, whenever I do the next time I do um, a fanzine focus series um, which will be for a while as yet I just wait for the next series of bank holidays to come up um, so um, yeah this is available from Swordfish Islands go check it out go get the both copies and then wait hopefully for the third copy to come out I know that he's been talking about doing doing a compilation of all three parts but they're too good to miss in this kind of format anyway Thank you very much for watching another unboxing in the look. I hope you've enjoyed this. And if you have, please click that like button down below. Um, if you've got any comments or feedback, appreciate you posting those. And lastly, uh, if you want to be alerted to yet more unboxings in the look where you see me with um, a basically a, a, a parcel or envelope or whatever um, containing a book or a game, that I will pull out, uh, basically unbox and chat about to the best extent of my knowledge for roughly uh, 10 minutes or so, all of course accompanied by uh, a nice hot cup of tea and a cat who is not ours, then please do hit that subscribe button. Lastly, thanks again Scott, looking forward to reading, reading this and I'll be back again soon with another unboxing the look. Bye for now.